Hey you guys, Tomes of Terror time. This is my little humble book review show. So the book we're talking about today is another one that I picked up uh, just kind of randomly at a used bookstore. And it's an author we've covered before. It's an author I've read before. This is Richard Lehman, and this book is called Body Rides. Now this was actually one that I hadn't heard of. It was published by Leisure Books, as a lot of his stuff was, um, particularly after he passed away. I feel like they released a lot of his uh, books because I think he died in 2001, if I'm not mistaken. So this came out in 2004, but when you read the story, um, I'm pretty sure that it was written like back in the 90s because I think it's actually set in 1995, I want to say. You know, some people have cellular phones, but it's, you know, they're kind of like, it, it's not something that's really ubiquitous. Uh, you know, there's still video stores, <laughs> that kind of stuff, because that actually like figures into the plot. So remember what I said about the last Richard Lehman book that I talked about, which, which was uh, Come Out Tonight. And remember how I said I'd read Richard Lehman before, so I know that he's very well known for, you know, he's very well known for being a quote unquote splatterpunk author. So, you know, a lot of his stuff is like really, really over the top, violent, gory, stuff like that. And there's also a lot of smut. This one is kind of like there's some violence and stuff, but it's mostly like in torture and stuff. But that's toward the end. This one is mostly just smut, um, which <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that uh, so much so that I don't know if I would actually call this a straightforward horror novel. This is more like an erotic crime thriller, sort of, even though the whole middle section, uh, not gonna lie, probably could have been excised because the whole middle part is basically like a rom-com. <laughs> It's so weird. This is such a weird book. It's ridiculous. It's kind of fun. Um, I kind of, I was curious to see like after I read it, cause I'm reading it and like some, like while I was reading it sometimes, like I was like, what the actual fuck am I reading? What's like, where is this going? And it's like, why is this dude just like so obsessed with nipples, man? So many nipples. I mean, everyone's nipples are described in just exhaustive detail. So it's, you know, if that's your thing, then <laughs> this is definitely the book for you. But yeah, like, so remember that I said, like when I did come out tonight, I was talking about, sorry about the banging in the background, that's Pookie. She figured out how to bang the cabinet doors back there. So I can't really get her to stop. She's just kind of like, that's, that's her new thing. But remember when I was talking about come out tonight, when I said the book was essentially like really, really adolescent. And I said, well, you know, I, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I was kind of like, you know, I guess I'll let it slide because the main characters were two adolescent boys and they found this grown woman who had been, I think she'd been like, you know, raped and left for dead and stuff. And they were kind of like, well, we're going to help her, but also we need to like peek at her titties. So it was that kind of thing. So it's just kind of like gross, but they're teenage boys. So what do you expect? Now this one though, has almost the same, it's not exactly the same, but it's a similar kind of setup, except in this case, like the main character is a grown ass man. He's like 28 years old. And, but he just thinks like an adolescent boy. This reads very much like an adolescent boy's very, very detailed, specific and expanded like sexual fantasy, but put into novel form. And like I said, because this is like, supposed to be a grown ass man. So it's sometimes, so sometimes I was reading this. So I'm just saying that, and I think this is true of a lot of Richard Lehman's books. I mean, he's he wrote a shit ton uh, and I've only read probably like a smattering of them. So I'm not like an expert by any means, but from what I've read of other people's like reviews of his stuff, basically you just have to really like suspend your disbelief because I kind of feel like a lot of other authors, if they wrote stuff like this, like no one would get away with it because people are like, come on, man. It's like nobody acts like that. Nobody thinks like that. Like the people in this book specifically, like the, the main character, like the stuff that he thinks and says, and particularly the women, and I think I brought this up like when I was talking about Come Out Tonight too. I'm like the women characters do and say things that no woman on earth would ever do like in real life. Uh, so I said, this is kind of like, definitely it's like a male fantasy type of uh, situation, which I'll get into in a minute because I seriously, I gotta spoil this one because there's some crazy fucking shit happens in this. It's just, you can't believe it. And actually this one, I kind of feel like the last, um, when I did come out tonight, I don't think, not, you know, I remember kind of what happened in that, but I remember it not really having a supernatural component. This one does. So not only um, are the characters uh, and their actions 
kind of unbelievable, but there's also like an additional, you know, suspension of disbelief necessary because there's also a supernatural element. Even though I will say like the supernatural element, like the concept of this is actually pretty cool, I, but I would ding it for, I kind of feel like it's such a cool concept that I wish it had been developed more instead of, you know, just kind of going off on these sexual fantasy digressions. Um, and I was like, well, can we get back to like the supernatural shit? Cause that's like kind of a cool idea and there's a lot you could do with that. There is some stuff done with it, but I kind of feel like it needed to be expanded more. Cause this is almost like, this is a very, very strange book. It's almost kind of like, I don't even know how I'd describe it. It's almost like a weird like road trip. I don't know. It's, it's not, it's not like structured. I kind of feel like it's not structured like a regular narrative novel. Like it's narrative, like shit happens and then shit happens after that. So there's like a plot, but I don't know, it's just really weird. So maybe if I describe what happens in it, like you'll see what I'm talking about. So the main character is this dude named Neil Darden. And this is when they said like his last name, I was all I could think of was Darden Restaurants, which I don't know if you know, but that's the company that owns like Olive Garden and a bunch of other ones. So, so the whole time I was just thinking Olive Garden man. But yeah, so uh, Neil lives in LA. And like I said, this is set in the mid nineties, I think. And he is really, um, probably overly concerned about because at the beginning of the book he goes back to the video store like after it's closed he's going to drop some movies off because he's like oh well you know i, I don't want to get a fine or whatever even though i'm pretty sure if you drop them off after it, it closes you get a fine anyway so i don't know why you would just wait just wait till the morning if he's so scared of going out so his inner monologue is he's like so terrified of going to the video store in the middle of the night and thinking he's going to get shot by quote unquote gangbangers and i'm just kind of like like, I know LA is like a dangerous city and everything like that, but I'm like, really? I mean, are you really so scared to just like drive like a mile and drop videos off and then go home that he has to like carry his, you know, loaded gun everywhere and he's just like so scared. Why am I doing this? Oh my God. And it's just, I'm kind of like, oh, okay. I'm not from LA, so I can't really say, but it just seemed a little, a little over the top. So while he's on his way to the video store and it's like midnight or whatever time it is, he hears uh, a woman screaming. So again, so like I said, it's very much like come out tonight where he just stumbles across like a, a damsel in distress, essentially. So he sees a naked woman, of course, and she's tied to a tree or a pole or something like that. And there's this dude who is like torturing her. I guess he's like plier and like, you know, doing her nipples with pliers and all this kind of stuff, like outside, you know what I mean? But like under an overpass, like there's nobody around. And so he, um, being like, woo, I'm a hero, I have a loaded gun because I was so scared of gangbangers shooting me like in a drive-by, that he intervenes and he shoots the perpetrator and he thinks he kills him. Uh, but then, so he goes and like helps the woman who, she hasn't been raped, but she's been like tortured and she's kind of fucked up. She's okay, but I mean, she's you know, her nipples are all fucked up because there's a lot of nipples in this book, like I said. Um, one of the one of the funniest reviews, I can't take credit for this, but one of the funniest reviews on Goodreads of this book was that <laughs> they said it's a shame, so I'm paraphrasing, but they said it's a shame that, you know how there's that urban legend that the Inuit have like 200 words for snow or something like that? It's like, it's too bad that the English language only has one word for nipple because... <laughs> Because Richard Lehman would have, could have really used like a lot more like words for nipple because there's a lot of nipple action in this. Every single, like I said, every single female character's nipples are described in like exhaustive. Whatever their nipples are up to, he's going to tell you. I'm just telling you that right now. So it's like, it's funny, but you know, I don't know. It's just funny to me. So, uh, so yeah, so he saves this woman because he thinks that he kills her attacker. And she's like kind of injured, but not too bad. And of course, like while he's saving her, he's like checking her out because she's naked, you know, and it's a dude. What are you going to do? Um, like I said, same kind of thing that happened and come out tonight, even though those were adolescent boys. And like I said, this is a 28 year old man who, who it's, I think he's a screenwriter. Yeah, he's a screenwriter. So he basically, so he takes her back to her house and it turns out that she's married to this like big sort of famous actor. And so she lives in this like big, huge, massive uh, house, you know, with a big pool and everything. So she essentially like invites him in and she's like super nice, like totally flirting with him and all this other, cause of course she is. 
And uh, even though he says that he has a girlfriend, which he does, uh, his girlfriend's name is Marta, and she is, um, I guess she works for an airline, so she's like gone at night, you know what I mean? And so he's kind of like, well, I can't, he really wants to do something with her, and he's basically like falls in love with her like immediately, which happens uh, a, a lot in this book, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Every single, again, every single woman that he meets, I'm pretty sure every single woman that he meets like falls desperately in love with him like in the first five minutes, which like I said, is a very... <laughs> it's a very male fantasy, kind of like, okay, that, that's not really what's gonna happen in real life, but it's a book, it's fine, okay. So this woman's name is Elise, and she basically says, well, I wanna thank you so much for saving my life, and basically everything that's mine is yours. I'm gonna put you in my will. It's like she goes way over the top, right? So he's like hanging out in the house. She makes him, she kind of like bullies him into staying a little bit. He takes a shit, but he's not, you know, he, he's kind of like, he he falls in love with her, like I said. Uh, so he's not too upset about staying there. He doesn't have sex with her or anything, but he thinks about it for sure. But yeah, he's like, take a shower, they have a drink and stuff. And then she's like, oh yeah, you're going to my well and all this other stuff. And then she's like, oh, and by the way, um, I have something for you. And this is where the supernatural element comes in. She has this bracelet and it's like a big, like heavy gold bracelet that looks like a snake or something like that. And she basically says, um, this bracelet was given to me by a boyfriend like a long time ago in Europe or wherever. She's like, and it's magic. Uh, basically what it allows you to do is that if you kiss the bracelet, it basically your soul or your whatever like comes out your body and you can go into other people's bodies and like live as them and like feel everything they feel and think every like know what they're thinking and stuff but they don't know that you're in there you know what i mean so that's why the book's called body rides and like i said the cover of it let me say i think i dropped it on the floor yeah I did. so the cover of it like this cover like pretty much has nothing to do with anything this is just like a very very generic but yeah so basically the whole setup is this bracelet allows you to like float you can kind of float around like loose too like you know what i mean just your soul is like wishing around but if you don't go into a body quickly enough like eventually like your body will kind of like sw like swoosh you back you know what i mean and you can only go so far there's like a distance there's all these rules and so like at least tells them all this it's like you know don't pop into like dead people don't it's just like it's probably not a good idea to like pop into somebody you love because they would probably like think some shit that you didn't want to know or you would find it's like invading their privacy i'm kind of like well it's invading everybody's privacy i don't know, really know if i would want to do this but i could see how some people would like so you could pop into somebody else's body and they don't like i said they don't know that you're in there and you can hear everything they think and feel what they're feeling and all this other kind of stuff so of course he doesn't believe her but she's kind of like well i'll prove it to you just kiss the bracelet and then he goes inside of her then he knows that she's like telling the truth and everything and he's like oh wow well I, you know i can't take this this is like magic so why are you giving it to me and she's like no for real like you saved my life i'd be dead now if it wasn't for you so you can have it so finally she convinces him to take it now as i said i'm gonna spoil this because this book is batshit insane so this first part, like I said, is really good. It's like a, like I said, it has like a lot of erotic elements and like this, this dude is just kind of like thinking like an adolescent boy all the time. He seriously can't do anything. Like this poor woman is like being tortured and killed and all he can think about is, ooh, nice boobies. You know what I mean? It's, it's that kind of thing. I'm like, this is why men should run shit. <laughs> this is what's going through their minds all the time. It's like, look, it's a life and death situation, but ooh, titties, look over there. It's just kind of like that. And it's just, so that just kind of like cracked me up about this whole thing. This book is ridiculous. If you go into it like knowing that it's ridiculous, then you'll probably have a good time with it. It's fun, but the middle part is kind of a drag, which I'll get into in a minute. But um, it's like the beginning and the end are good though. But like I said, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. So he has the bracelet and uh, so he leaves. And then he decides that he goes back to the, the site where he initially saved her, like where he shot the dude. And he sees to his chagrin that the dude that he thought that he had shot dead, he totally, he, he wasn't sure how many times he hit him. He said, I think I hit him three times and I for sure like hit him in the head. So, and he was just laying there. Like they kind of looked at him and was like, yeah, he looks dead to me or whatever. But then when he goes back to that site again, uh, the dude is gone. So he's like, well, fuck me. Uh, now what, now what? It's like, you know, so now he like kind of knows who he is because I think he dropped his business card or some shit like that. So he, so the guy like knows where he is. So he's like, well shit, we're probably, he's probably going to come 
after me now because I shot him. And then he thinks to himself, oh shit, he might go back after Elise because he knows where she lives too because she said that he that the dude actually like kidnapped her from her house. So he obviously knew where she lived and like took her to this like other location. So he decides that it will be quicker. Like he has, he's like the most indecisive dude ever. And he, so he's like in the car and he's kind of like, now, well, he's like, at the set, he's like, well, shit, should I like actually drive back to Elise's house and make sure she's okay? Cause what if the killer came back after her? Or should I just do the bracelet and like, you know, fly over there, would that be quicker? So he decides to do uh, the bracelet thing and then he ends up going back to Elise's house and it turns out that the killer uh, absolutely did go back to her house to finish her off and he totally like tortured her and she's already dead so it's too late for him to save her. So obviously he feels like super really bad about it. Even if he, I mean, even if he'd gone there like without the bracelet, like he, if he'd gone there in bodily form, cause there's one thing too is like if you put the bracelet on and then you go and ride somebody, like do a body ride, and your soul is outside your body, like your body is just kind of, it's not dead or anything, but you're just laying there like you're kind of asleep or like in a coma or whatever. So it's good if, it, it's kind of like a buddy, you need a buddy system is what I'm saying, because somebody needs to like watch your fucking body like while you're out flying around and so nothing bad happens to your body. Um, also, if somebody pulls the bracelet off, it like breaks the link and you just pop back into your body like immediately. Like I said, there's all these kind of like rules about it. And it's weird because they don't really, he doesn't really go into like where the bracelet came from or why it works. And I'm not saying that you have to, I'm just saying that, you know, and basically it's, it's almost just kind of like, I don't, I don't know if I'd necessarily call it a MacGuffin, but it's cause it's not really that, but it does like factor into the plot and they do use it, but it's just kind of like a whatever technology, you know what I mean? Where it's just kind of like, we, I needed something that you, people could pop from body to body because that's kind of what he wanted to do. So it's like, oh, a bracelet, that's, let's roll with that and we're not gonna explain why it works or where it came from or no mythology behind it or anything like that. It's just a thing and it exists and it's the only one apparently and, uh, and you can use it. So that's kind of uh, how it goes. So he's like really upset about Elise getting killed and then he thinks to himself, well shit, I was in her house uh, before she got killed, so I can't really go to the cops because they'll think I did it. And uh, he actually did see the dude that did it, sort of. Like he didn't get a good look at his face. He actually starts calling him Rasputin because he's like this really skinny dude that he's always wearing like leather pants and he has like this big like bushy beard and like this big long hair and everything. And also because he shot him like three times and then he just like wandered off apparently. And uh, you know, was able to like actually go back to Elise's house and do some really fucked up shit to her. So obviously, uh, you know, he, uh, he was still, okay enough to do that. So now he's like, well shit, I can't go to the cops. And now the dude is probably gonna come after me. So what am I gonna do? So he actually tells his girlfriend, Marta, like when she comes home, he tells her about Elise and he tells her about not being able to save her and all this other kind of stuff. He does not tell her about the bracelet, but he does tell her about uh, the other shit. Um, you know, he kind of like finagles the story a little bit. So uh, at some point, like, this is so weird. This is what I mean. It's like, well, this is like weird decisions. So prior to, I can't remember if this is like prior to, like he tells Marta, his girlfriend about shit, but then like she goes back to work and he's like, well, I'm gonna stay at your apartment because you know, the killer knows where I live. And it's like, if he comes back there, he'll fuck me up and he doesn't know you. So I'm gonna stay here. So she, so he stays there. And then even though he's worried that a killer is after him, even though he's sad because this woman that he fell in love with in five minutes got horribly tortured and murdered, um, he decides, hey, I'm gonna fuck around with this bracelet some more. So he puts the bracelet on and then he starts flying around to, he ends up in the, in the body of like this girl that, or this woman that lives in his apartment complex, I guess. And so he basically like, he gets inside her while she's like reading some like a smutty book or something. And he's like getting all turned on by it. So this is so, it's like so ridiculous. Like I said, it's, it's more like erotica, I guess, than, but it's like a crime thriller too. Like, but that happens, but it's just like a bizarre, I don't know, it's so bizarre. So, so he does that kind of stuff. And then because he is an idiot, he's in her for a while. And then like, she starts acting really weird and like uh, getting upset about somebody, somebody named Darren or something like that. I think her name's Karen. Yeah, because their names rhymed. And so he's kind of like weirded out, but then he's like so intrigued that he's like, you know what I should do? Even though it's like one o'clock in the morning 
and I'm kind of traumatized because I just witnessed a horrible murder and shot a dude. I'm gonna go over to this girl's house in person, even though she doesn't know me from Adam, and I've just been inside her body and felt all her thoughts and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm not, that's, that's not weird at all. It's like, why is that such a stupid idea? So he decides that he's gonna go to this girl's apartment, even though it's like the middle of the night. And so he does that and he goes there in person and he basically lies to her and says, oh, I'm a friend of Darren's and he told me about you and I wanted to meet you and I know it's the middle of the night, blah, blah, blah. And again, very unrealistically, she's like, oh, okay, I'll let you in. <laughs> Even though this is a complete and total stranger uh, who says that he knows. And see, he thinks that Darren is her boyfriend, but then it turns out that like it's her brother and then like she had some kind of incesty thing going on with because she because he kind of caught her thoughts or whatever. And he didn't realize that it was a brother. And then like he said something about it and that it was like this big awkward thing. And then like she jumped on him and scratched him and then he ended up punching her in the stomach. <laughs> and it's just like, and I'm sitting there going, this dude should not have this bracelet should not have this amazing technology because look at the idiotic shit and all the like at least the poor woman that got murdered that gave it to him um you know yeah he saved her life for like five minutes because she ended up getting killed later which wasn't really his fault but because he did think he shot the dude but then like she had all these rules like don't do this with a bracelet i don't you know don't i don't advise that and all this other kind of stuff and he like immediately starts doing like stupid shit with it which you know maybe is maybe that is realistic i'm not really sure <laughs> but it's like it's hard to it's hard to root for the guy and it's hard to understand why every single woman that he meets is immediately like oh hey you seem okay let's have sex or let's fall in love or yeah you can come in my apartment even though i don't know who you are and, and, and you, you showed up in my house in the middle of the night with this weird ass story it's just so so bizarre it's like like i said every woman in this like it does something that no women in their right mind would ever do so yeah so he ends up punching this one in the stomach and then because he has all these scratches on his arms that karen gave him during this fight um, you know, while they were struggling, he decides, well, I don't want Marta seeing that because then I'll have to explain the whole situation with Karen and like, what the fuck was, was that even about? So he decides he's going to go on the lamb. So what he does is he leaves a note for Marta in her apartment and basically says, well, you know, I can't really go to the cops and the killer might be after me and I don't want him coming after you and like finding out where I'm at. So I'm just gonna like take off and I'm not gonna tell you where I'm going. So then like the middle part of the book is basically like a rom-com road trip movie because he decides for whatever reason, because I, just be, for plot convenience, he's really into theme parks. And he's like, well, I can't go to any of the ones in California because they're too, uh, they're not far enough away or something like that. So he decides he's gonna go to, I think, Nevada and go to this sort of like obscure theme park like called The Fort, which I guess is kind of like a Custer's Last Stand themed kind of whatever, even though that didn't happen in Nevada, so whatever. But I don't know if it's a real place or not, it might be. So he decides he's gonna go there for whatever reason and hide out for a few days. Now on the way there, he stops at like some diner, like a random diner someplace and meets an 18 year old waitress named Sue, who again, immediately falls in love with him. And even though all he does literally is like eat breakfast there, she's basically like, he's basically like, yeah, I'm going to the fort, like this theme park. She's like, I'm coming with you. And he's like, okay. So they, <laughs> so she just leaves again with this random ass stranger, this random ass stranger. Now at first she's not, he's not gonna like tell her about the bracelet, but then, uh, again, in a very plot conveniency kind of way. She puts it on because she thinks it's pretty. And then for whatever reason, she starts rubbing it like on her face, like in a way that no human would do and ends up kissing it accidentally. And then she, so she figures out what it does and is not all that alarmed by it. She's kind of like, oh, you can pop in other people's bodies. That's neat. So then she starts thinking about like ways that they can make money with it. Like, can we go to Vegas and all this other stuff? And none of that ever like pans out. But so again, so the, basically the whole middle part of the book is like this road trip. They don't really use the bracelet all that much except for, you know, doing sex shit. Like, you know, I'm gonna go in your body and see what it's like having these, yeah, it's like really weird. And so, but yeah, like the middle part, there's no, and I'm like, did you forget that there's like a murderer after you and like the cops, cause like the Elise, the woman that got killed at the beginning, she's like married to kind of a famous dude. So her getting butchered in her house is kind of like a big deal. It's like all over the news and everything like that. And 
So, but he seems to like not worry, but it's like, nope, I just got this 18 year old waitress. And even though I have a girlfriend and I'm just kind of, I, now I fell in love with this girl and all this other kind of shit. So then like the whole middle part of the book is that. And at that point, I think at that point I was just kind of like, what the fuck am I actually reading? Like, where is this going? What happened to the murderer? What happened to all the crime shit? Like that was pretty cool. And what happened to all the body jumping? Because there's really not much of it, like in the middle part of the book. So finally, um, you know, after they spend three days together and fall in love forever, you know, and Marta is kind of like, he calls her and tells her about it, but then kind of lies. And then she's mad, understandably. But then they, three days pass, they come back to LA. And then the three of them, like Marta and Sue meet each other and basically like instantly oh now we're a threesome like marta is totally okay with it she's like sue is so awesome yeah we're all gonna like share neil because he's like the best and i'm just kind of like what okay so, <laughs> so that's what i mean that's why i said i had to spoil this because it's fucking shit. it's crazy <laughs> so yeah she's not bad or nothing he's basically like yeah i banged her she's 18 and then marta's just like okay well let's all bang her and then we'll just have this whole and i'm just like i'm pretty sure that never went like that like in the history of the universe because like he didn't even like warn her ahead of time it was he just showed up with her and she's just kind of like okay we're doing this we're like the we're the dream team now so finally like the three of them they find out that by using the bracelet in various ways, they find out that the um, that the killer, the, you know, that they've nicknamed Rasputin, they find out what his real name is, like by being inside his head. And they find out that he has indeed been back at Neil's apartment, like looking for him. And he does, does totally want to kill him. And then they also find out too, that it was like Elise's husband who paid uh, Rasputin to kill her. Uh, so that's what they find out. So they're trying. So again, there's another thing too, where they're just kind of like, well, we can't call the cops. They can't call the cops. They never, literally never, ever call the cops in the whole entire thing, despite like some really, really fucked up shit happening. They decide that they're going to just do this by themselves using the bracelet. And so the two women basically like put on bikinis and go over to the actor's house and like try to get information out of him. And then they try to like, he's um, gonna pay off the killer and they're trying to like steal the money cause it's like half a million dollars. So they go into this like big like crime shenanigans and pretty much like almost get themselves killed like a million times, like I said, without the police getting involved because there's this whole thing, I guess Richard Lehman is not really, uh, I don't know, he's like not a big fan of calling the cops or he has a big thing of, of LA. It's like, oh, we can't call the cops because you, you know, they'll put you in jail just for defending yourself. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't know if that's true, but okay. So, so he had excuses like through the whole book, like why they couldn't call the cops and why they had to do all this dumb shit themselves. So, but they, they consistently make like really, really stupid decisions and just do the stupidest things to like, to get themselves in hotter and hotter water. Um, and they just like use the bracelet in like really dumb ways. And it's just, it's a ridiculous, ridiculous book. But that said, it's still pretty entertaining. Um, I feel like it could have been a lot shorter because that whole middle section with the theme park and him falling in love with the 18 year old waitress and then them coming back and the other girl from being totally okay with it um, and being like, yeah, let's all just jump in bed together. Um, and I was, it just read so much like adolescent male fantasy to me. And it's just like, but it's funny. So if you go into it with that mindset of just thinking it's going to be this ridiculous, unbelievable, these three idiotic characters doing idiotic things, which no person in their right mind would do in real life, then you might have a good time with it. Like I said, it could have been a lot shorter. It's pretty long. It's like 500 or 600 pages, might be almost 600 pages. And I kind of feel like the whole middle part was like not necessary. Um, you know, it could have just been him, but could have been just like the killer. Cause it almost kind of felt like the whole middle part where he was like him and Sue were falling in love at the theme park. It kind of felt like the, he forgot that the killer existed or I don't know. It was just like a weird digression and it kind of like slowed the pace down. But you know, when it got, when it got back to the killer part, it was actually pretty good. Um, even though it's, like I said, totally not believable. And they make like a bunch of really dumb decisions. I did actually sort of, I'm not sure if I liked the ending or not. Maybe I won't spoil the ending, but the ending was kind of ballsy in the sense that I wasn't like expecting it. But then, I don't know, it got kind of weird at then, but like the implications of it are kind of weird. And it did have something to do with the body ride type of thing. And um, people d like not jumping into dead bodies and and what happens if your body dies and all this other kind of stuff. So I did kind of like that, but 
Yeah, this was a strange one. And I did kind of feel like I read a lot of reviews on Goodreads and just like most of his other books, I feel like well, it had like a lot of like four and five star reviews, but then there were some people that were like, e that were even really into Richard Lehman's books that were kind of like, yeah, this is like his worst one. This one like sucked so bad. And a lot of the criticisms they had were a lot of the same criticisms that I had where they just, this, the characters were completely unbelievable. When he was inside, uh, like when Neil would jump inside a woman's head, like the shit that she was thinking was not anything like a woman would ever think. And it just seemed like the main thrust of the plot like was forgotten for a long time, just so he could like describe nipples some more, um, <laughs> like every single woman. And it just seemed, I'm like, this dude is like fucking distractible as hell, man. It's like every time a set of nipples walks by, he just like loses his shit. He just like forgets what he was thinking about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know. It was just, it's funny. It was funny to me. Not particularly scary, um, you know, but if you like kind of smutty crime thrillers that have like a weird wedged in rom-com in the middle, then uh, you might kind of dig this. And like I said, the, the cover has nothing to do with anything in the book. So don't let the cover like, uh, you know, think it's gonna be like that because it's not anything like that. And like I said, um, you know, his, he's known for his stuff being, Richard Lehman is known for his stuff being like really gory and stuff like that. This doesn't really have a lot of that. It does have some kind of nasty torture uh, toward the end, but it's not described as much as I thought some of his other stuff was, you know what I mean? Like a lot of it, he kind of kept implied, which, so in a lot of ways, like the violence and the gore in this one, it's there, but it's like a lot more restrained than usual. But then like the sexual stuff is just kind of like crazy out there. This, like I said, this sounds very much like a young guy's like very, very, very specific sexual fetish. Um, and he wrote like a 600 page book about it. That's ex that's like the vibe that I got. And like this and come out tonight, I was like, does he really had, he must've really had a thing for, being like, uh, you know, finding a naked woman who's just been attacked and like saving her and then her being so grateful that she's basically like, yeah, you know, hump me, even though I've just been like horribly raped and tortured. It's like, cause Come Out Tonight kind of had that vibe too. So like I said, it's very specific. It's very specific and weird, like fetish. I'm not judging, I'm just saying. Uh, but yeah, so not one of the better books that I've read this year, but it was fun enough that I kind of kept it going to the end because honestly, when I kept reading it, I was just kind of like, what the fuck? I don't even know where this is going or what the fuck is even happening right now. So in a way it's ridiculousness kind of worked in its favor because I was just kind of like, let's see what the fuck else happens next. Let's see whose nipples like walk by erectly or whatever. So it's like, so I did have fun with it. It wasn't boring, that's for sure. Middle part was a little bit boring, but uh, but the front, but the the beginning and end were like pretty fun. So I had a good time with it. Um, but it's not like great literature or anything like that. It's just like kind of a fun, smutty book with some violence in it and sort of a killer. Uh, but you know, it's what whatever. It is what it is. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> if any of you have read it or if you've read any of the other Richard Lehman stuff, I'm dying to talk about this with somebody because it's. I don't know, it's just one of the weirdest things I've ever read. Um, but yeah, so let me know in the comments and uh, we'll have a discussion about it. We'll try to think up some more names for nipples <laughs> in, in Richard Lehman's honor. And uh, yeah, so that'll do it for this book review, uh, my Tomes of Terror show, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.